As the film opens in a world devastated by an apocalyptic event, we meet Juliet, a woman of incredible resilience. Juliet roams the barren, desolate landscape, constantly searching for resources that will ensure her survival in this harsh environment. Armed with a firearm, she remains on high alert, ready to defend herself against any potential threats that may emerge from the ruins of civilization. One fateful day, Juliet decides to pause her journey for a brief moment at an abandoned gas station, hoping to discover some much-needed sustenance. However, her plans are suddenly disrupted when she hears a menacing roar echoing from the top floor of the dilapidated station. Sensing the impending danger, Juliet quickly retreats to the relative safety of her car. Within the span of her vehicle, Juliet begins communicating with her friend Harry, who is anxiously awaiting news of the food she has managed to gather for their group of 39 survivors. Unfortunately, Juliet informs Harry that her search at the gas station has been fruitless. Worried about her battery draining too quickly, she ends the conversation prematurely, promising to take a shortcut back to their base. During her solo drive home, Juliet stumbles upon an abandoned RV and discovers a severely injured man lying on the ground. Drawing her gun, she demands information on the creature that threatened her earlier. The man reveals that he successfully trapped the creature within the confines of the RV. Furthermore, he informs Juliet of a cache of canned goods inside the vehicle. As Juliet considers entering the RV, the man begs her to end his suffering, fearing the monster's wrath. Juliet realizes that time is running out and decides to confront the creature. A fierce battle ensues, marked by shattered windows and the RV shaking. In the end, Juliet emerges victorious, having defeated the creature. Exhausted but determined, she exits the RV to find the man dead on the ground. As she resumes her calm drive, her attention is momentarily distracted by a photo of herself with a man. Unfortunately, the wind blows the photo away, causing her to lose control of the vehicle. The car flips over several times, and Juliet loses consciousness. Meanwhile, the scene shifts to a bustling city, where Juliet is seen standing in an art gallery, years before the world fell into chaos. Jack, the gallery owner, approaches her with flirtatious intent, but she is uninterested in his advances. She reveals that she has sought shelter outside from the rain. At first, she resists him, but after realizing his humble approach, she accepts his encouragement to appreciate the beauty of the artwork around her. He explains to her the profound senses in the paintings, and all she has to do is open her eyes. In the present, Juliet opens her eyes from unconsciousness. After Juliet regains consciousness, her leg throbs with the pain of an open fracture. She realizes that her gun has moved from its mount, lying a few feet away from the car. Her attempts to call for help using her radio prove futile, and with the Reapers increasingly active in the night, Juliet must act quickly to retrieve her firearm. Using a makeshift pole, Juliet reaches for her gun and comes close to grabbing it before the bars come loose, thwarting her attempts. Another flashback takes us to Juliet, who is leaving the gallery with Jack. They wander the street, and Juliet falls victim to Jack's playful joke about her meat-based food. Being a vegetarian, she immediately spits out the bite, but is not displeased when she realizes it was all for fun. Jack suggests that Juliet accompany him to his apartment, and is stunned by its beauty upon their arrival. The two share drinks and cheese, and engage in conversation. Juliet finds it difficult to open up to Jack, initially refusing to reveal her name when he asks. However, after some convincing, she gives in and reveals her name before leaving, paving the way for Jack to reciprocate and tell her his. In the present, Juliet tries and succeeds in sitting up and taking a closer look at her wound. She had some alcohol in the car so she puts some on the wound. She is not in a good place now but the scene shifts to her memories. The next time Juliet and Jack meet is by chance. They were both with other partners when their eyes met. Juliet and her man leave the bar, but Jack can't take his eyes off her. Curiosity consumes him, and he quietly follows them outside, witnessing a transaction where the man pays Juliet for a substance. Jack notices how Juliet rejects the man's attempt to kiss her. This piques his curiosity, and he continues to follow her and learns that she is involved in drug dealing. He does not stop there, but continues to follow her to her home. She heads to the subway and arrives at the ghetto area where she left. She is greeted by some thugs at her door, but before she enters her apartment, Jack appears in front of her. Having no choice, she welcomes him in, and from that moment on, Jack discovers the horrific circumstances she faces as a woman. When he tries to offer her help or any kind of assistance to get her life back on track, she is extremely resistant and impenetrable. She says that it is not that simple, and when he insists on doing so, he is met with resistance and firmly tells him to leave. Jack's remorse for intruding on Juliet's privacy increases when he witnesses her injecting herself with drugs. 
Jack is disappointed to see the needle on her, but he is unable to do anything as she screams to get out and leave her. In the present, Juliet finally manages to free her leg from being trapped in the steering wheel. Using her bandage, Juliet repairs her radio and attempts to contact Harry, informing him of her injury and need for help. Frustratingly, she receives no response, but her attention is diverted by the sound of an approaching reaper. Determined to retrieve her gun, Juliet crawls out of the car, remaining silent and alert as she watches the creature, ready to defend herself if necessary. But her hopes for a peaceful encounter are shattered when Harry's call breaks the silence. The response she was waiting for has come, and Harry remains on the radio, telling her to do certain things if she wants to be discovered. But now that the Reaper has arrived, she is unable to make a sound, and to our surprise, to distract the Reaper, Juliet throws her radio outside, hoping that it will be attracted to the noise and leave her. She fears that the Reaper will discover her, and she will die at any moment, but fortunately for her, the Reaper suddenly hears some noise in the distance and heads towards it, leaving Juliet relieved. Now that the Reaper is gone, Juliet has had time to collect herself. She replenishes her ammunition with new bullets. In a flashback, while Jack is at home sketching, Juliet shows up at Jack's apartment unannounced, but this time she is badly injured and covered in blood. She not in a good place, she seeks refuge in his arms. Not questioning her injuries, Jack tends to her wounds, providing her with comfort and a place to rest. The next morning, Juliet expresses her gratitude to Jack and joins him for breakfast. Jack opens up to his past, sharing his struggles after his parents' death, how he has managed to cope, and gives Juliet hope that she can do the same. Unsure, Juliet asks permission to go for a walk to get some fresh air, but Jack sees through her facade, knowing she is searching for a solution. Feeling insulted, Juliet tries to leave but finds herself trapped in an elevator. Despite her demands, Jack insists that she stay with him until she recovers. Overwhelmed with anger, Juliet unleashes her frustration, breaking Jack's belongings. Unfazed, Jack embraces her tightly, comforting her until she finally gives in, and from there they share a kiss. In the present timeline, Juliet finds herself in the midst of a post-apocalyptic world. To navigate the darkness and detect any lurking reapers, Juliet throws several glow sticks. The first reaper she ever encountered is still fresh in her memory. Right now, her surroundings seem devoid of any immediate threats, so she cautiously moves towards the radio she has spotted. She remains vigilant, her senses heightened to every sound and movement around her. Suddenly, a noise from behind her startles her, causing her heart to pound in her chest. In response, Juliet throws more glow sticks in different directions, illuminating her surroundings until she spots a menacing reaper figure crouching atop her car. With quick precision, she takes out the creature with a well-aimed shot and retreats to the safety of her car, silently preparing for her next encounter. Suddenly, however, the Reaper appears, ripping off the window shade and reaching for Juliet's foot. Juliet struggles to break free from its grip, starting the car and speeding off, the spinning wheels causing the beast pain. Once again, she finds herself waiting for the Reaper, her fingers gripping her gun tightly as she fires a few shots at the approaching creature, unaware that it has already managed to sneak into the car from behind. Surprised by his sudden appearance, Juliet shoots the Reaper, forcing him to retreat. She then tries to steady her shaking hands and focus on fixing her radio. Seeking a moment of solace amidst the chaos, Juliet reaches for her bottle, only to find it empty. In a flashback, we see Jack and Juliet moving into their new home. Juliet is a whirlwind of emotions, both elated and nervous about the big changes in their lives. Jack touches her face tenderly, trying to elicit a smile from her. He proudly shows her the room they have lovingly prepared for their future child. However, Juliet expresses doubts about her ability to be a good mother and bring happiness to their child. Jack reassures her, emphasizing that their commitment to making things right is the most important aspect. Before they continue exploring the rest of the house, Jack asks Juliet to express her love for him. Although she does not say it directly, he can sense the depth of her feelings. Later, Juliet reluctantly reveals to Jack that she is pregnant. The news brings him immense joy. However, their happiness is tragically short-lived, as Juliet gives birth to a stillborn child. The couple are left to deal with the grief of returning home to an empty nursery, a painful reminder of their loss. In Juliet's bleak reality, she manages to repair her radio and contacts Harry, however, due to the weak signal, their conversation is filled with misunderstandings. Juliet hears Harry mention a locator beacon. Determined to retrieve the beacon, she carefully follows the instructions in her manual. Finally, the beacon activates, prompting Juliet to barricade the windows. To her dismay, she realizes that a reaper is waiting outside. The creature relentlessly attempts to break into the car, as Juliet presses her foot against the window shade, causing her pain. 
Eventually, the Reaper retreats. Juliet secures the shade with a bar and braces herself for the creature's next attack, firing as it repeatedly attacks her car from different angles. Suddenly, Juliet receives a call from Harry. She tells him that she is under attack by a Reaper, so he instructs her to use her flashlight on it. Juliet is left to fend off the Reaper's continued attacks while she awaits her imminent rescue. Now that she has been exposed, she quickly turns on her car's headlights, illuminating the darkness around her and successfully driving the monstrous Reaper away. Once the immediate threat has passed, she picks up her radio and dials Harry's number. She inquires about their estimated time of arrival, but Harry, with a note of regret in his voice, informs her that they will not be able to rescue her until sunrise. In a flashback, we see a different side of Juliet's life. We see Jack, her partner, berating her for her tendency to run away from problems. His concern for her is evident every time she disappears without a trace. She challenges Jack to admit that he blames her for the loss of their child, but Jack vehemently denies it. Juliet also accuses Jack of pressuring her to have a child, even though she was not ready. Jack decides to leave the car and take the subway instead. Before leaving, he finally confesses to Juliet that her past addictions were the reason their child did not survive. He also ends their relationship before driving away. As Juliet watches him leave, tears stream down her face. She screams after him, declaring that she does not need him in her life. Hours later, Juliet finds herself in a bar, drowning her sorrows in alcohol. The news on TV reports an attack on the subway station, killing over 30 people. She answers a call she had been ignoring, only to be horrified to discover that Jack was among those injured. She quickly leaves the bar, her mind filled with worry for Jack. In the present, Juliet hears a car pass. She honks the horn in hopes of getting its attention. A bike then stops, and the man approaching her promises to help her. Unfortunately, the man turns out to be a cannibal who is hell-bent on killing Juliet. As he tries to stab her, the Grim Reaper appears and attacks the cannibal. After watching the Reaper feast on the cannibal, Juliet checks how many bullets she has left. She slowly places the gun under her chin, contemplating ending her life. However, she suddenly remembers how Jack looked at the hospital the night of the subway attack. His throat and windpipe had been burned by the gas used in the attack, leaving him unable to speak. Jack could only touch the thick plastic separating them. Using a whiteboard and a marker, a weak Jack tells Juliet that he loves her and asks her never to give up. This memory prompts Juliet to put down the gun. Determined to survive, Juliet takes a rocket and two fuel canisters from the car, dousing one with gasoline. She then lights the rocket and waves it around to lure the Reaper out. When it does, she leads it to the canister she had prepared a while ago. When the creature stands on the fuel-soaked ground, Juliet shoots the canister to kill it with an explosion, but the creature survives and escapes. Once again in danger, Juliet maintains her guard and searches for the Reaper. The Reaper then grabs Juliet and makes her drop her gun, so she quickly crawls into the car. However, the creature grabs her leg and tries to pull her out, causing her wound to bleed profusely. Juliet then continues to fight, but the Reaper pulls her out of the car and throws her to the ground. As the creature closes in on her, Juliet uses the gun she managed to grab and shoots the Reaper twice, crying once she realizes her problem is over. As Juliet looks up at the stars, the bitter memory of Jack's death suddenly fills her mind. When the sun finally rises, the creature suddenly moves and creeps towards Juliet, but she fails to shoot it, but as she has no bullets left, Juliet hastily reloads her gun, afraid that she will die at any moment. Now that the Reaper is above her, Juliet can only remain still as the Reaper gently touches her face, making her realize that it is Jack. Juliet then remembers the day she met Jack, where the man told her that he believed in fate and that the universe has a way of bringing people together. Being a skeptic, Juliet asks Jack what he would do if she left him at that moment. So as a grand romantic gesture, Jack closes the gallery and decides to walk home with her. The film ends as we are surprised by the present once again. Juliet cries as she finally tells Jack that she loves him. Juliet then embraces Jack as she leans her head against his. And now that she has finally found her way back to him, she decides that they will go together to the afterlife.